Hello and welcome again to another video on number theory. So today we'll talk about how to check for divisibility graphically. And that's what the automaton of divisibility by n is for. So n here is a natural number bigger than three in this case. So we will already did an example of how to check by divisibility graphically for n equals to three. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I will highly recommend that you go ahead and watch it because some of the things that are gonna be done in here will depend on some of the things we did in that video. So if you haven't watched that video, I'm gonna post that video in the video description for this one. And it's gonna be also a link somewhere here in the upper right corner of this video as well. So just check that video if you need to uh, understand what an automaton is and how you check for the visibility by those. So this is the one we did in the previous video. This is the visibility by three graphically. And remember what we did in that video was that using uh, this graph that we have here, we can check a number is divisible by three by following a path through this uh, automaton or graph provided that we already have our number written in a certain way. Now the pluses, plus ones here and the times 10, those things that are here, uh, those was explained in that video. So watch that video if you need to uh, double check or review that. So this was what we did in the previous video. Now, suppose you want to check or you want to construct an automaton of divisibility by four, five, six, and any other number, any other natural number. So how do you get such an automaton? How do you construct one of those? The good thing is that there is an algorithm that you can follow so you can construct that automaton. And that's the purpose of this video. So given any natural number n, they will be able to construct an automaton that will check the visibility by the number n. All right, so this is the algorithm. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain to you the steps of that algorithm. And then later, I'm gonna give you an example on how the algorithm works. So the first step here is to draw n distinct nodes, or you can call those nodes like points, and you're gonna label them from the numbers zero through n minus one. So for example, if n is equal, let's say n is equal to, to four, you're gonna label them zero, one, two, and three. And similarly for five, six, and, and any other, uh, other natural number. So you will do that. That would be the first step you need to follow. The next one is we're gonna draw a directed edge, or if you wanna think about it as an arrow, so just an arrow, from the number i to the number i plus one, where this i here ranges from zero to n minus two, and then another arrow from n minus one to zero. So basically what you're gonna do is put the number zero through n minus one, and you're gonna put arrows from zero to one, from zero to two, uh, from zero to one, one to two, two to three, and so on, until you get the complete cycle. I'll give an example in a second so you understand what this means. But I wanna give you the steps first. Now, the third step is those edges that you draw in the step two, now you're gonna label them with plus one. So that's gonna, gonna label those. The fourth step, is also gonna be some directed edges. So in this case, we're gonna also draw some directed edges or arrows. And in this case, we're gonna take an arrow from i to the result of 10i mod n. Now, let me bring attention to that particular piece of information here. So this one, 10i mod n. So what does that mod here mean? What you're gonna do is you're gonna compute 10 times i, whatever the i is, i is from zero to n minus one, and then mod n means you're gonna divide the number 10i by n, 
and you're gonna look at the remainder, you know, the quotient. You're gonna do a, an integer division. So you're gonna take 10i, you're gonna divide it by n, and this mod here is you're gonna look at only the remainder of that division. So we'll see an example of how that works. And the last step is those edges that you computed in step number four, now you're gonna label them with times 10. So that's what be the actual algorithm to find the automaton for ADN. So let's put this into practice and let's check how do we do one, for example, with an automaton of divisibility by four. So in this case, our n will be four. So we're gonna do it for n equals four. So let's go into the first step. So in this case, n is equal to four. So we're gonna draw n distinct nodes and we're gonna label them zero, one, two, and three. If you have five, it will be zero, one, two, three, and five, and four, and so on. So in this case, it's four, so we go from zero to three. Now, we put those in the plane, distinct points. Now, I put the points here in this locations, at this location, this one, and this one, and this one, for reasons of symmetry only. You don't have to put the points in any particular uh, fashion. It's just put them in a, such a way that it's easier for you to draw the arrows and it somehow looks symmetric. So I chose this uh, this uh, picture here because the, the graph that I'm gonna get is gonna be somehow symmetric. So that's why we did it in this, in this fashion. So that's the first thing we do. That was step number one. Now let's move to step number two. To step number two, we're gonna draw a directed edge or arrow from i to i plus one when i goes from zero to n minus two and from n minus one to zero. So basically what all of this here says is I'm gonna start here at zero and I'm gonna draw an arrow from zero to one. This arrow here. So let's go ahead and do that. So from zero to one, that goes one arrow. Then I go another arrow from one to two and then from two to three and then from three to zero. So basically you put the point zero, one, two, three, and then you put arrows to form kind of like a cycle, if you want to call it like that. That would be the end of step number two. So let's go into step number three. So the step number three would be to label those edges, the one that we just uh, constructed in step number two, we're going to label them with plus one. And so that's the result we get when we get to label those plus one. So that's the end of a step number three. So that first three steps are actually quite simple. The ones that requires a little bit more work is a step number four, which we will see in a second. So for step number four, what we need to do, do is we're gonna draw a directed edge arrow from I to 10i mod n, and remember that this 10i mod n is take this number 10 times i, multiply that out, divide it by n, and take the remainder of it. And then we're gonna do that for i between zero through n minus one. So let's see how we do that in this particular case when our n is actually equal to four. So I'm gonna get rid of all of that. So in this case, n is four. So what we have to do is uh, draw a director edge from i to the result of this computation. And the i goes from zero to three. If n is, for example, five, you go through from zero to four and so on. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna get rid of all of that. And let's keep in mind that this is what we're trying to do now. Look at these edges. So let's see. So we get this type of edges. Now, in this case for i equals zero, so I'm gonna get an edge from zero to zero mode four. This is for the i equals zero. From one, this is 10 because it's 10 times i. So 10 times one mode four, that's for i equals one. 
for i equals 2, this is going to be 20 because it's 10 times 2. And for i equals 3, this is going to be 30. So we have ages from 0 to 0 mod 4, 1 to 10 mod 4, 2 to 20 mod 4, and 3 to 30 mod 4. So those are the ages. Of course, we need to simplify all of those uh, computations there to make sure which one is the age that we need to draw. So do we need to find those things out? So let's do that. So what is zero mod four? Now remember what I mentioned was that you take zero divided by four and look at the remainder. Zero goes exactly, four goes exactly into zero. So the remainder of course, in that case will be zero. Let's look at the next one, 10 mod four. Remember we're looking at the remainder. So 10 divided by four leaves a remainder of two because four goes into 10 two times Four times two is eight, leaves a remainder of two. So that was gonna give me two. Now for the next one, 20 mod four, four goes exactly into 20, it's five times. So the remainder in that case will be zero. Remember, we are always looking at the remainder, not the quotient. And for the last one is 30 mod four. We look at the remainder when 30 is divided by four. So in that case, the remainder is also two because uh, four goes into 37 times. Seven times four is 28, so you leave a remainder of two. So what we have here is zero goes to zero. This is zero more mod four. This is 10 more four. This is 20 more four and 30 mod four. So these are the ages we need to draw in the next step of this construction. So zero to one, zero to zero, one to two, two to zero, three to two. So those are the edges that we're gonna, we're gonna build right now. So let's look at the, the picture again. So this is the one we were looking at it at the beginning. So let's do zero to zero because these are different type of edges. I'm gonna use another color. The purpose of using colors here is not is strictly necessary. It's just a way to visualize things, to make it a little, things a little bit more visually appealing, but it's not necessary. So I'm gonna use another type of color for this type of edges, because these edges are a little bit different from the other one. So from I'm gonna start with from one to two. So you see I'm using the blue color. So one to two, then I have the other edge from three to two. Remember to respect the direction of the edge. And then we have from two to zero, and then the first one is from zero to zero. So that is a self age from there. So we completed the, the those ages in that step. So now those blue ages, which you can use another color, it doesn't matter. We're gonna label those edges with times 10. So we do that. And then we find actually the automaton of the visibility by four. So that will be our answer. Now you can use this automaton to check for the visibility by four. This is graphically, of course, is more efficient if you do this numerically, because we have seen that when you check the visibility by four, it's only necessary to check the last two digits of that number, but this is to do it graphically. Now, just to emphasize the idea of how to check the visibility graphically, let me do an example where we use this automaton to check for the visibility. So let's say we're gonna determine whether four divides 112 using the automaton of the visibility by four. Now, remember, as we uh, did in the previous video, which if you haven't watched it, I recommend again that you do it because to check by divisibility by four using this type of graphs, you need to express the number, which in this case is 112, as a sequence of additions of one and multiplication by 10. That is carefully explained in that video. If you haven't watched it, I recommend that you do it. I'm gonna, again, put to the, in the video description that particular video and I'm uh, so you can watch it in, if, if you need to. All right, so the sequence for 112 as an addition of ones and tens is plus one times 10 plus one 
times 10 plus 1 plus 1. Remember what you do is you start at 0, you first generate this number with plus 1, then you move to the next one. So you have to multiply by 10, and then you produce the 1 adding 1, you move to the next position, multiplying by 10 and add 1, 1. I went pretty quickly there. If you didn't understand that, go watch that video that I put in the video description. So this is going to be the sequence that represents the number 112. And this sequence right here is going to give me a path that I need to follow in my automaton. So that's the path. So let's do, let's do that. So this is the sequence I'm going to follow this one right here that's the sequence i'm gonna follow so we're gonna start at the first one plus one you always start at zero here so plus one gives you the first edge now we add at one from one i have to go through an edge that is labeled times 10 which is that edge that you see in a different color and then i go plus one so I'm already at two, so I go plus one. So there's only one way to go plus one. Now I'm at three, the node three. At the node three, then I go times 10, which is that edge that you see in a different color. Then I'm at two right now. From two, I have to go plus one, and I'm at three right now. And from three, I have to go another plus one that takes me back to zero. If you path ends at zero that means the number is divisible by four in this case now if your path ends on any other node so if it ends here here or here that node tells you the remainder when you divide by four so that's the example so the conclusion because we ended at zero then that's four divides 112 of course this would be easy to check because to check divisibility by 4, you only need to check the last two digits. 12 is, of course, divisible by 4. So we know that 4 is divisible. 112 is divisible by 4. But that's not the point of the example. The point of the example is to show this graphically. Now, so that's the, the example. Now, what I'm going to show you now is some other automatons of divisibility by 5, six and seven and of course you can do more depending on how patient you are the larger the number n the more convoluted is going to be the graph so probably it's not a good idea to go for example 20 and 30 is going to be very difficult to visualize so this is a nice way to visualize when the number n is kind of a small so i'm just now i'm going to stop talking i'm just going to show you the automatons of the visibility by several of the uh, numbers n for five, six, and seven. Okay, that's all I have to say for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, take care and good luck.